Okay, let's proceed with our next topics. Under the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines, the nationality of corporations and corporate juridical personality. Okay. So as to nationality of corporations, we have foreign corporation as defined under Section 140 of the Revised Corporation Code. So a foreign corporation is a corporation formed, organized, or existing under laws other than those of the Philippines, and whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in its own country or state. So, by method of deduction, a domestic corporation is a corporation formed, organized, or existing under Philippine laws. Okay? So, napakadali. So, let us now consider the tests in determining nationality of corporations. First, the primary test, which is the place of incorporation test. Okay? So, the nationality of the corporation is determined by the state of incorporation, regardless of the nationality of the stockholders. Okay? Napakadali, di ba? Kung saan in-incorporate, then yun ang nationality niya. Okay? In-incorporate siya sa Pilipinas, then it is a domestic corporation. Okay? Ano lang ang kaisa-isang exception? Okay? The provisions under the Foreign Investment Act of 1991. Okay? Sabi doon, any corporation organized or incorporated abroad but registered as doing business in the Philippines under the Revised Corporation Code and 100% of the outstanding capital stock and entitled to vote is wholly owned by Filipinos, is considered as a Philippine national. Okay? Yan lang kayo sa isang exemption. Okay? Under the Foreign Investment Act of 1991, regardless of being incorporated or organized abroad, but if such corporation is doing business in the Philippines under the Revised Corporation Code, and such corporations outstanding capital stock 100% of which is wholly owned by Filipinos then it is considered as a Philippine national under the Foreign Investment Act of 1991 okay napakadali lang okay so tingnan na rin natin yung ibang provisions ng Foreign Investment Act relevant to nationality of corporation okay under the Foreign Investment Act of 1991 Okay. Uh, with respect to the Revised Corporation Code or uh, with cross-reference to the Revised Corporation Code, sabi nga, a corporation formed, organized, or existing under laws other than those of the Philippines and whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in its own country or state are considered as foreign corporation. Okay? Pero itong mga foreign corporation na to shall have the right to transact business in the Philippines after obtaining a license for that purpose in accordance with the Revised Corporation Code and a Certificate of Authority from the appropriate government agency. Okay? So magkakaroon lang ng right ang isang foreign corporation to transact business in the Philippines after obtaining a license for that purpose in accordance with the Revised Corporation Code and a Certificate of Authority from the appropriate government agency. Okay? So required lang naman siya na kumuha ng license only if it is doing business. Okay? So alamin natin what constitutes doing business. Okay? Sabi ng Supreme Court, Sa Agilent Technology Singapore Limited versus Integrated Silicon Technology Philippines, okay, it implies a continuity of commercial dealings and arrangements and contemplates to the extent 
the performance of acts or works on the, or the exercise of some of the functions normally incident to or in progressive prosecution of the purpose and subject of its organization. Okay, para sa mga naging isudyante ko or for those students of mine during this term na hindi na namin inabot, okay, yung discussion of foreign corporation, eto na siya. Okay, so medyo in-incorporate ko siya dito, yung parts. Okay, anong importante sa foreign corporations? Tignan mo kung yung foreign corporation is doing business in the Philippines. Paano mo malalaman? Kailangan alam mo ang definition ng doing business. Okay? So, ano pa? Under the Foreign Investment Act, doing business shall include soliciting orders, service contracts, opening offices, where they're called liaison office or branches, appointing representatives or distributors domicile in the Philippines or who in any calendar year stay in the country for a period or periods totaling 180 days or more participating in the management or supervision or control of any domestic business firm entity or corporation in the Philippines and any other act or acts that imply a continuity of commercial dealings or arrangement and contemplates to that extent the performance of acts or works or the exercise of some of the functions normally incident to and in progressive prosecution of commercial gain or of the purpose and object of the business organization. Okay? So, tandaan mo lang, ang doing business, it implies continuity of commercial dealings and arrangements. Yan lang siya. Yan yung keyword dyan. It implies continuity of commercial dealings and arrangements. Okay? Okay, under the Foreign Investment Act, the following shall not be deemed uh, doing business, sorry, shall not be deemed to include mere investment, okay? As a shareholder by a foreign entity in domestic corporations duly organized to do business and or and or the exercise of rights of such investor, nor having a nominee, director, or officer to represent its interest in such corporation, nor appointing a representative or distributor domiciled in the Philippines, which transacts business in its own name and for its own account. Okay? So, yan yung pahapiyaw lang nating discussion sa foreign corporations with gross reference to the particular or pertinent provisions under the revised corporation codes, particularly section 140 to 153, and the provisions under Foreign Investment Act. Okay? So, let's proceed with the second test. Ano uli muna yung first test natin? Place of incorporation test, which is the primary test in determining the nationality of the corporation. Nandaan mo yan ha? Primary test. Yan ang una mong gagamitin. Place of incorporation test. Okay? What is the second test? Control test. Okay? Ito naman, it determines the nationality of the corporation by the nationality of the controlling stockholders. Okay? Usually, this is applied in times of war. So, inaalam mo yung citizenship ng controlling stockholders. However, such this test, okay, this test or control test was adopted by the Foreign Investment Act of 1991. Okay? So, as a general guideline in determining the nationality of corporations, engage in nationalized activity. Okay? So, ang ginagamit under the Foreign Investment Act okay, ay control test. Okay? To determine the nationality of corporations engaged in a nationalized activity. Ano ba yung mga nationalized activity? Okay? Nationalized activities under the Constitution involves the following, okay? Exploitation and development of natural resources. So, 60% dapat niyan reserve sa mga Filipinos, okay? Kapag ang corporation is a public utility, 60% dapat ng ownership niyan ay sa mga Filipinos. Advertising, 70% Filipinos. 
mass media, 100% Filipinos. Ang word na ginamit ay of whose capital is owned by Filipino citizens. So, 60% of whose capital is owned by Filipino citizens. 70% of whose capital is owned by Filipino citizens. And 100% of whose capital is owned by Filipino citizens. Okay? So, may nagpadala sa akin ng request dati. Uh, parang merong uh, nabasa silang article or news item na pinapayagan na daw yung full foreign ownership ng geothermal uh, energy exploration. Okay? So, sabi, ni-request, baka daw pwedeng ma-discuss natin. Okay? So, discuss natin. Okay? <coughs> sabi sa Section 2, Article 12 of the 1987 Constitution, okay? Ito yung primary reference natin. Siyempre, ito yung constitutional provision. Eh. Ito rin yung nagpo-provide ng mga nationalized activities. Okay? Medyo mahaba, pero hihimayin natin para mas maunawaan mo yung nakikita mong mga uh, news items. Bakit ganun? Di ba? Siyempre, pag makita mo siya, isipin mo, oh, bakit ganun? Akala ko ba 60% lang? Eh, bakit biglang pinayagan na 100%? Binenta na naman ba yung bansa natin? Yung mga ganyan, di ba? So, tingnan natin, di ba? Minsan kasi din yung ibang news items, clickbait eh, di ba? Parang, kaya titignan din natin, ano ba talaga yung agreement doon, okay? So, alamin natin, ano sinasabi ng constitution. Ito yung first paragraph, medyo mahaba. All lands of public domain, waters, minerals, coal, petroleum, and other mineral oils, all forces of potential energy, fisheries, forest or timber, wildlife, flora and fauna, and other natural resources are owned by the state. So malinaw yung first sentence. Lahat yan pagmamayari ng estado. All lands of public domain, waters, minerals, coal, petroleum, and other mineral oils, all forces of potential energy, fisheries, forest or timber, wildlife, flora and fauna, and other natural resources are owned by the state. With the exception of agricultural lands, okay, with the exception of agricultural lands, all other natural resources shall not be alienated. So, under the second sentence, ang pwede lang ma-alienate, agricultural lands. All other natural resources shall not be alienated. Let's proceed. The exploration, development, and utilization of natural resources shall be under the full control and supervision of the state. So, pwede bang i-explore? Pwede bang i-develop? Pwede bang i-utilize yung natural resources? Yes, pwede. Pero, yung exploration, yung development, yung utilization shall be under the full control and supervision of the state. Okay? Next, the state may directly undertake such activities. O pwede daw yung state mismo ang mag-explore. Pwede daw yung state mismo ang mag-develop. Pwede daw yung state mismo ang mag-utilize. Pero sa Pilipinas ba, kaya na natin? Direct tayo, state? Hindi kaya eh. Kaya sina naglagay, din ng naglagay din sa constitution ng option. Or, it may enter into co-production, joint venture, or production sharing agreements with Filipino citizens, or corporations, or associations, at least 60% to of which, whose capital Diba? 60% of whose capital is owned by such citizens. Okay? Pwede siyang mag-enter ng co-production, joint venture, or product sharing agreements with Filipino citizens or corporations. Pero dapat si corporation na yon ay 60% ng capital niya ay owned by Filipino citizens. Okay? Such agreements may be for a period not exceeding 25 years. Renewable for not more than 25 years. Okay? So, pwede 50 years. Di ba? 
and under such terms and conditions as may be provided by law. In cases of water rights for irrigation, water supply fisheries or industrial uses other than the development of water power, beneficial use may be the measure and limit of the grant. Right? Next paragraph. The state shall protect the nation's marine wealth in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone, and reserve its use and enjoyment exclusively to Filipino citizens. Minamandate ng constitution yan, na? Sabi ng constitution, the state shall protect the nation's marine wealth in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone and reserve its use and enjoyment exclusively to Filipinos. Okay? So, ibang topic naman yan, pero siguro may naiisip na kayo na relevant topic tungkol dyan sa provision na yan. Okay? So, yung mga marine wealth natin sa exclusive economic zone okay, shall be protected by the state. Malinaw eh. And reserve its use and enjoyment exclusive to Filipino citizens. Okay? Other topic na yan. Saka na natin didiscuss yan. Okay? Sa ibang subject siguro. Di ba? Okay? The Congress may by law allow small-scale utilization of natural resources by Filipino citizens as well as cooperative fish farming with priorities to subsistence, fishermen, and fish workers in rivers, lakes, bays, and lagoons. Okay. The president, ito siya, di ba? The president may enter into agreements with foreign-owned corporations involving either technical or financial assistance for large-scale exploration development, and utilization of minerals, petroleum, and other mineral oils according to the general terms and conditions provided by law based on real contributions to the economic growth and general welfare of the country. In such agreements, the state shall promote the development and use of local scientific and technical resources. The President shall notify the Congress of every contract entered into in accordance with this provision within 30 days from its execution. So, makikita mo, class, as a rule, okay, pagmamayari ng estado ang lahat ng natural resources at bilang ang estado ang nagmamayari ng natural resources ng bansang ito, siya lang ang may karapatan na mag-explore, mag-develop, and mag-utilize. Or, Pwede daw siya makipag-enter ng joint venture. Di ba? Sabi kanina, kung hindi niya kaya, di ba? Pwede siya makipag-enter ng co-production, joint venture or production sharing agreements with Filipino citizens or corporations or associations at least 60% of whose capital is owned by such citizens. Ibig sabihin, Filipino citizens parang. Ang bukod tangi lamang Diba? Ang bukod tangi lamang paraan na makakapasok ang foreign-owned corporations sa usaping natural resources okay? ay sa pamamagitan ng paragraph na ito. Okay? Kung ang presidente ay nakipag-agree sa isang foreign-owned corporations through, okay? through technical or financial assistance for large scale exploration. Ito yung mga tinatawag class na FTAA. Financial Technical Assistance Agreements. Yan. FTAA ang tawag dyan. Kaya malamang yung nabasa yung news article tungkol sa geothermal okay, exploration, FTAA yun. Hindi siya talaga direct utilization, hindi siya direct exploration, hindi siya direct development. Okay? Idinaan siya sa isang FTAA, sa isang Financial Technical Assistance Agreement. Okay? Kasi never makakapasok ang isang foreign 
owned corporation or 100% foreign owned corporation pagdating sa exploration, development, or utilization ng natural resources natin. Okay? So, yan ang catch dyan. Okay? Yan ang catch dyan. Sir, pwede bang gawing palusot yun? Oo. Karaniwan nagagawang palusot. Tinatago sa mga, FEC, sa mga FTAA. Pero, syempre, pwede namang mapawalang visa ang mga FTAA for being unconstitutional. Yan. Kaya pwede sampahan ng kaso sa Supreme Court upang mabusisi ng Supreme Court, mapag-aralan ng Supreme Court kung talaga bang ang FTAA ay sumunod, alinsunod sa mga provisions o sa mga tinatadhana ng saligang batas. Okay? Nangyari na yan dati. May pinawalang bisang FTAA. Okay? Kasi ito lang ang bukod tayong paraan talaga eh, para makapasok ang mga foreign corporations. Okay? So, sana nalinawan ka sa paglilinaw natin sa topic na yon sa nabasa mong news item na yon Okay? Tandaan mo lang, ang bukod tangi lang paraan na makakaiksena o makakapasok ang isang 100% foreign-owned corporation with respect to exploration, development, and utilization of our natural resources, particularly minerals, petroleum, and other mineral oils, ay sa pamamagitan lamang ng Financial or Technical Assistance Agreements, FTAA. Okay? Kaya nga karaniwan, ang ganda nga ng provision nitong constitution natin na ito. Eh. Tignan mo. While it empowered the President to enter into agreements, si Presidente kailangan i-notify niya rin yung Congress. Di ba? <laughs> Kumbaga para may report sa bayan. Parang ganyan eh. Hindi pwedeng itago. Kailangan i-notify. Okay. Ito yung mga provisions gusto nilang galawin ngayon eh. Nung iba nating mga kagalang-galang ng mga namumuno. <laughs> Pero baka may nakikita silang wisdom, di ba? Pero para sa akin, napakagandang provisions na ito. Di ba? Na siguradong protektado yung natural resources na dapat tayong mga Pilipino ang makinabang. Okay? So, sana nalinawang ka ha sa topic na yan. So, let's proceed sa ating totoong topic. Okay? Balik tayo sa control test. So, tandaan mo, ginagamit ng control test okay, to determine the extent of ownership, especially those in corporations uh, involved in nationalized activities. Okay? So, next, control test. In Gamboa versus Tevez, sinabi dyan ng Supreme Court that the constitutional requirement of at least 60% Filipino ownership applies not only to voting control but also to the beneficial ownership of the corporation. So, dalawa ang titignan mo. Tignan mo yung 60% requirement kung na-comply doon sa shares with voting rights at tignan mo rin yung 60% requirement kung na-comply doon sa full beneficial ownership of the corporation. Okay? So, dapat pareho. Okay? Voting control plus beneficial ownership. Okay? Napakaganda rin nitong kaso na to, itong Gamboa versus Tebes. Di ba? Para ang involved dyan ay isang public utility. Okay? PLDT shares. Okay? PLDT shares. Kaya dyan pinaliwanag ng Supreme Court na ang constitutional requirement with respect to public utilities that 60% of uh, whose capital must be owned by Filipino applies not only to the voting share or to the voting control of the corporation but also to the beneficial ownership of the corporation. Okay? So, tandaan mo ha, dalawa, shares with voting rights plus full beneficial ownership. Okay? Okay. So, control test, application of two-tiered test. Okay, the required ownership shall be applied to both the total number of outstanding shares of stock entitled to vote in the election of directors and the total number of outstanding shares of stock whether or not entitled to vote 
in the election of directors. Okay? So, dalawa ang application. Tignan mo muna kung nagko-comply with respect to the outstanding number outstanding shares of stock entitled to vote and tignan mo rin kung nagko-comply as to the total number of outstanding shares of stock whether or not entitled to vote. In accordance with the SEC Memorandum Circular Number 08-2013. Okay? In Gamboa, in Roy, I mean, in Dean Roy, si Dean Roy ito eh, si Dean Jude Roy versus Chairperson Herbosa, the Supreme Court held or upheld SEC Memorandum Circular Number 08-2013. Okay? Sinabi ng Supreme Court, valid daw yun. Yung inisyo ng SEC na guidelines. Okay? So, anong lagi mo nang titignan? Tignan mo yung beneficial ownership. Okay? Tignan mo yung beneficial ownership. And beneficial ownership refers to the ownership of the subject shares. It is a question of who, in fact, is the beneficial owner of the individual shares for the purpose of classifying it as either Filipino-owned or non-Filipino-owned. Okay? So, next test, in relation pa rin yan actually sa control test. Okay? Ito yung tinatawag na, ay, sorry, meron pa palang isa. Okay? May, so, may isa pa pala tayo, isang, isang slide pa. Okay? In the case of Nara Nickel Mining uh, versus Redmond, so shares belonging to corporations or partnerships, at least 60% of the capital of which is owned by Filipino citizens, shall be considered as of Philippine nationality. Okay? Grandfather rule, okay? ito yung isang isa pang test, but in relation din to sa control test. Okay? So, makikita nyo naman ito maya, maya Okay, It is a method of determining the nationality of a corporation, which in turn is owned by another corporation by breaking down the equity structure of the shareholders of the corporation. So, may kita mo agad, ina-apply lang ang grandfather rule. Okay? Kung yung isang corporation, yung inaalam mong nationality ng corporation, ay owned din ng another corporation. Okay? So, it is a method of determining the nationality of a corporation which in turn is owned by another corporation by breaking down the equity structure of the shareholders of the corporation. It is a method by which the percentage of Filipino equity in a corporation engaged in nationalized and or partly nationalized areas of activities is computed in case where corporate shareholders are present. So, i-apply mo lang ang grandfather rule kung merong corporate shareholders. Okay? It is done by attributing the nationality of the second or even subsequent tier of ownership to determine the nationality of the corporate shareholder. Mamaya, illustrate natin. Ito na pala. Halimbawa, 69% of XYZ's corporation shares are owned by ABC Corporation, while the other 31% of the shares are owned by Filipino stockholders. Si ABC Corporation naman has the following ownership. 47% Filipino-owned, 53% foreign-owned. May XYZ Corporation engage in the development of natural resources in the Philippines? Okay. <coughs> so, si XYZ, okay, 69% daw niya ay owned by ABC Corporation. Yung 31%, Filipino stockholders. Si ABC Corporation naman, 47% Filipino-owned, 50%, 53% foreign-owned. Pwede ba mag-engage si XYZ in the development of natural resources in the Philippines? Okay? Para mas malinaw sa'yo, ganito lang ang grandfather rule. Okay? Ito siya, si XYZ Corporation. Ang stockholders daw na XYZ Corporation ay si ABC Corporation, 69% ang hawak niya kay XYZ, at yung other 31% is owned by Filipino citizens. Ngayon, para mapayagan mo si XYZ Corporation to engage in a nationalized activity, dapat 60% owned 
ng Filipinos ang ownership niya, correct? Meron ka ng 31%. Paano mo ngayon malalaman kung itong 69% na to or part ng 69% na to ay Filipino o hindi? Okay? Sabi, 47% daw nito pagmamayari ng Filipinos. Okay? 47% daw niyan pagmamayari ng Filipinos. O anong gagawin natin? Okay? Ang gagawin natin? Paano ma-determine? Ang gagawin mo, <coughs> alamin mo, ano ba ang 47% nitong 69% na to? Kasi sabi, 47% daw nitong ABC Corporation is owned by Filipinos. At 69% ng XYZ Corporation is owned by ABC Corporation. So, i-attribute mo to. Ilan ba ang 47% ng 69%? 32.43. O, so, lumalabas, 32.43 dito owned ng Filipinos plus 31 percent. Sobra pa. Di ba? Sobra pa. So, pwede mag-engage sa nationalist activity si XYZ Corporation. Ganun lang ang grandfather rule. Okay? I-attribute mo lang to. Okay? Kuha? Okay. Okay. So, let's proceed. Okay? So, let's proceed. To corporate juridical personality. Okay, tapos na pala tayo sa nationality. Okay, madali lang itong corporate juridical personality. Okay, so base dun sa una nating naaral, sa first part, corporation as an artificial being, di ba? So, ang applicable dyan ay yung doctrine of separate juridical personality or doctrine of corporate entity which states that a corporation has a legal personality separate and distinct from that of the people comprising it. That is, the stockholders, directors, and officers. Hiwala is a corporation, correct? It also, okay, the principle of limited, limited liability also applies. Okay, since corporation is a separate uh, juridical entity, okay, stockholders are not liable for corporate liabilities. And corporate debt is not the debt of the stockholders. Okay, napakasimple ng... Uh, corporate uh, separate juridical personality. Now, class, bilang separate personality, bilang separate person, okay, meron din ba siyang mga karapatan? Meron din ba siyang mga liabilities? Okay? So, yun yung aalamin natin. Okay? So, meron ba siyang since person siya, okay, since person siya, Meron din ba siyang karapatan under the Bill of Rights? Di ba? Sabi dun sa Bill of Rights, sa Section 1, di ba? No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Hindi naman di-distinguish kung anong klaseng person yun. Kung natural o juridical person. Now, a corporation being a separate juridical person, nag enjoy ba siya? in the same way as natural persons ng constitutional rights. Okay? Yes, ang sagot. Yes. Di ba? A corporation is protected under the constitution. Except, 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 right against self-incrimination. Okay? Tingnan natin itong kaso na to. Maganda to eh. Okay? Baseco versus PCGG. Okay? Baseco versus PCGG. Napakagandang kaso. Okay? Sabi dito, PCGG, Okay, sabi dito, uh, PCGG required Baseco along with other corporations to produce their books and records in connection with the inquiry investigation regarding companies whose shares were alleged purchase, allegedly purchased using public funds. That is, companies created using public funds. Okay? So, just to give you a background, okay, itong Bataan Shipyard, 
in engineering company or ngayon, alam na nga natin ngayon na Baseko. Okay, yan yung alam yung Baseko compound sa may bandang tondo. Okay? Ah, uh, may pinaghinalaan kasi siya na isa siya sa mga dami corporations, 'di ba? Isa siya sa mga dami corporations ni President Marcos. Okay? So kung mababa, maganda nga kung may time kayo mabasa niyo din tong kasong to. Medyo mahaba lang siya, tsaka medyo madetalye. Okay? So, doon mo makikita yung mga annotations ni President Marcos sa, instra- sa instructions doon sa mga memorandums. Yan yung mga memorandum na ginagamit para to funnel funds, di ba? to funnel public funds from one agency to another. Tapos, mapupunta sa isang private corporation. Okay? So, isa tong base ko sa pinaghihinalaan ng PCGG. Ngayon, para ma-pursue investigation, na-require ni PCGG tong base ko to produce their books in records in connection with the investigation and inquiry. Okay? Nag-raise ng defense tong si base ko. Sabi niya, hindi niyo pwedeng gawin yan kasi may bilang corporation, meron kaming constitutional right against self-incrimination. Okay? So, umakit yung kaso sa Supreme Court. So, ang issue is the argument raised by the by Baseco Tenable. Sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi. Okay? The right against self-incrimination is only available to natural persons. Okay? So, this guarantee does not extend to judicial juridical persons, particularly private corporations. Private corporations are creatures of the state and the state must always have that reserve power to inquire into the activities of the corporations it created. Imagine mo nga naman kung, di ba, e, ikaw bilang private corporation, okay, gawa ka lang ng estado eh, kaya ka nagkaroon ng personality. Ngayong estado na yung nag-iimbestiga, biglang mag-raise ka ng defense na hindi ka pwedeng pakailaman ng estado, hindi pwede. Okay? O, yan lang yung meaning. Yan lang yung ibig sabihin ng kaso na yan. So, tandaan mo, ang corporation, okay, enjoys constitutional rights. Pero ito, hindi kasama to doon. Yung right against self-incrimination. Dahil applicable lang ang right against self-incrimination, okay, sa natural persons. Okay? So, how about liability for tort and crimes? So, with respect to criminal liability, a corporation itself cannot be held liable for felonies described in the revised penal code or in special laws because it cannot perform physical overt acts of a crime. Okay? Nevertheless, the officers of the corporation may in their individual capacities be liable for the crimes done in behalf of the corporation. While the act of the officers may impose certain obligations on the corporation because of the criminal act of its officers, the officer who performed the criminal act must assume the criminal liability. Okay? Okay. Ito naman yung kaibahang dito. However, in the Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2001, okay, dinefined kasi doon yung terminal offender na any person who commits laundering offense. Then, it defined a person as any natural or juridical person. Tapos sa penalty clause pa ng AMLA, also mentions a corporation as offender. So, tingin ko, isa to sa exception. Okay? So, under the money, Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2001, a corporation can be held criminally liable. Okay? How about with respect to torts? A corporation can be held civilly liable in the same manner as natural persons for torts. So when a tortuous act is committed by an officer or agent under express direction or authority from the stockholders or members acting as a body or generally from the directors as the governing body. Okay? So ano ang liability pag ganyan, pag torts? Solidary, di ba? Tatandaan mo ba yan? <laughs> sa obligations and contracts mo. Okay? 
solidary. Okay? Solidary yan. Okay? So, let's proceed to the piercing the veil of corporate fiction. So, as mentioned earlier, okay, the doctrine of separate juridical personality provides that a corporation as a legal personality, separate and distinct from that of the people comprising it. Diba? Sinabi natin kanina yan. While a corporation may exist for any lawful purpose, the law will regard it as an association of persons or in case of two corporations, merge them into one when it when its corporate legal entity is used as a cloak for fraud or illegality. Okay? So, ito yung piercing the veil of corporate fiction. Okay? Ito yung piercing the veil of corporate fiction. Ay, sorry. Medyo namali pala ako ng lagay. Okay, so before we proceed with the piercing the veil of corporate fiction, may singit pa. Recovery of damages. Okay, sorry. So, as a rule, a juridical person is generally not entitled to moral damages. Okay? Except, di ba? Kasi, bakit siya hindi entitled sa moral damages? Kasi unlike a natural person, he cannot experience physical or mental suffering or such sentiments as wounded feelings, serious anxiety, mental anguish, or moral shock. Except, a corporation may have good reputation, which if, which if besmirched, may also be a ground for moral damages. So in cases of libel, slander, and in any other form of defamation under Article 2219 of the Civil Code, makaka-recover siya ng damages. Okay? Oh, sorry. Namali ng singit niyang slide. So balik tayo sa piercing the veil of corporate fiction. Okay? So, pwede siyang ipawalang bisa ng batas. Okay? So titignan na lang siya kung ang corporation is being used as a cloak for fraud or illegality, okay, the, cor the corporate fiction or the veil of corporate fiction may be pierced, okay, such that the law will regard the corporation as a mere association of persons. Or in case of two pers or two corporations, the law will merge them into one when its corporate legal entity is used as a cloak for fraud or illegality. Okay? So, ginagamit lamang ang doctrine na ito. Okay? When the corporation is being used to defeat public convenience, justify wrong, protect fraud or defend crime, or when it is made as a shield to confuse legitimate issues. As when a corporation is being used as an alter ego or business conduit of a person. So, isa-isahin natin yung mga instances. Okay? So, pero tandaan mo, class, ha? Ginagamit lamang or in lamang ang piercing the veil of corporate fiction. Okay? In very exceptional circumstances. Hindi porke nakakita ka ng parang irregularity or illegality, automatic ipipierce yung veil. No naman. Hindi. Diba? Kung baga parang last resort yan. Okay? Kasi nga, pinoprotektahan pa rin ng batas yung pagkakaloob sa isang corporation ng separate juridical personality. Okay? So, what are the instances? Okay? The exceptional cases of applications? Okay, in equity cases, when piercing of the corporate fiction is necessary to achieve justice or equity. Okay? In fraud cases, when the corporate entity is used to commit fraud, justify a wrong, or to defend a crime, or to commit tax evasion. In alter ego cases, when corporation is merely a farce, alter ego, business conduit, instrumentality, agency, or adjunct of a person or another entity. Or when a corporation is being used to defeat public convenience. So, when the corporate entity is used to defeat public convenience, as when the corporate fiction is used for the evasion of an existing obligation. Okay? So, what are the relevant doctrines or rules that must be remembered with respect to the doctrine of piercing the veil of corporate entity? One is the control or instrumentality rule, where one corporation is so organized and controlled and its affairs are conducted so that it is in fact a mere instrumentality or adjunct of the other corporation. So, the fiction of corporate entity of the instrumentality may be disregarded. Okay? Ginagamit lang ng isang corporation yung another corporation 
para as a shield, di ba? Kumbaga, another layer. O pwede nang i-disregard yung personality. Nung, na, pwede nang i-disregard yung corporate fiction ng isang uh, corporate instrumentality. Okay? Another one, fraud test. Okay? This test requires that the parent corporation's conduct in using the subsidiary corporation be unjust, fraudulent, or wrongful. It recognizes the piercing is appropriate only if the parent corporation uses the subsidiary in a way that harms the creditor. So, ang dapat mong tandaan, totality of the circumstances must be considered. Okay? Ang tawag doon, totality of circumstances test. So, mapapansin mo, itong mga guidelines, okay? Itong <coughs> mga guidelines, rules, test, hindi automatic talaga. Kung baga titignan mo pa rin yung buong scenario or buong pangyayari, yung buong circumstances. Okay? The harm or causal connection test, tignan mo naman dito, okay, that the plaintiff to show that the defendant's control exerted in a fraudulent, illegal, or otherwise unfair manner toward it caused the harm suffered. There must be a causal connection between the fraudulent conduct committed through the instrumentality of the subsidiary and injury suffered or the damage incurred or the damage incurred by the plaintiff. Okay? Pwede rin, di ba? Apply mo rin yung totality of circumstances test. O, di ba? Yan nga yung sinabi ko kanina. Na karaniman talaga sa mga test na to in determining the applicability of the doctrine of piercing the veil, titignan mo yung buong pangyayari. Hindi lang yung isolated na isolated na transaction. Okay? Anong effect pag na pierce na yung corporate veil? So, the corporation will be treated as an association or collection of persons or individuals undertaking business as a group. Okay? The stockholders or members will be considered as a corporation. So, nawala na yung separate juridical personality. Yung stockholders or members, sila na mismo, consider sila as corporation. Thus, they will be held liable for corporate liabilities. Okay? The liability will attach personally or directly to the officers and stockholders. Kasi nga, hindi na separate juridical personality. Okay? So, where there are two corporations, ano naman ang effect? They will be merged into one. Okay? The one will be merely regarded as the instrumentality Agency could do it or a junk of the other. Ano pa? The corporation continues for other legitimate objectives. So, the corporate character is not necessarily abrogated. Okay? And the corporation is not dissolved. So, kung mapapansin mo, <coughs> kung mapapansin mo, <coughs> sorry, mapapansin mo, hindi naman ibig sabihin na kapag pinears yung corporate veil, okay, madidissolve yung corporation. Okay, yan ang tatandaan mo ha. Pinipears lang yung corporate veil for a particular case. Okay? So, halimbawa, may nagsampa ng kaso, hinahabol yung corporation. Okay? Pinalabas, gawa din pala ng mga stockholders. Okay? For that particular case, pwedeng ipears yung veil. Pero with respect to other transaction ng corporations na wala namang problema, ganun pa rin. Tuloy pa rin yung separate corporate juridical personality niya. Yun ang tatandaan mo ha. Hindi porke in-apply yung doctrine of piercing the veil of corporate entity, automatic dissolve yung corporation. Okay? It, is, it still enjoys separate uh, corporate juridical personality with respect to other transactions that affected by the case pursued to pierce its corporate veil. Okay? Ayos. So, tapos na tayo dyan sa nationality and the doctrine of separate juridical personality. So, God willing, matuloy uli natin itong lecture. So, thank you for listening everyone and keep safe. God bless everyone.